In this short video, I'd like to take and show you how to use the Bode plotter and circuit maker. Uh, turns out that one of the tools that circuit maker supplies you is a device that allows you to take a look at the frequency response of a circuit. So in experiment number three, I ask you to do this. So let's go over to the file here. Let's open. And I've already drawn these circuits to save me some time. And experiment number three, uh, circuit. I'm going to open that up. So, so here's a circuit that I ask you to deal with. And what happens is, if we want to use the Bode plotter, we have to do some initial setup work. So uh, let me go up to simulation here. And if I click on simulation analysis setup, uh, what I discover is uh, this box here is um, checked, AC analysis. And uh, if I click on the AC radio button here, it says it's enabled. I have a total AC test points of 1,000. I'm starting at 1 hertz and going to 100 kilohertz. And my sweep is linear. Uh, when you originally take a look at this, I think it by default comes up with one hertz to four hertz and three test points. Now, a number of test points are actually the number of calculations that the circuit maker is doing to simulate the circuit. So the more test points you have, the finer the detail of the simulation. The only trouble is there's a trade-off between you know, how long it takes to do the simulation and the uh, number of points. So if I you know, raise that to a million points, I might sit here for 10 minutes while the simulation is running. So uh, you have to be careful, you need a little experience, but if you don't have any experience with Circuit Maker, uh, it's difficult to know, um, you know, what you should do with this, but let's just start with a thousand. So I hit okay, I'm gonna run the analysis. When I run the analysis, you might notice that, and I'll move myself out of the, up to the corner here someplace, um, we get two screens, over on the right-hand side, we have an oscilloscope screen. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this, by the way, the multimeter, we don't need that. Here's my probe and what's happened is I've gone and uh, touched the wire here between the 1K and the uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So I get an oscilloscope display and over here, I actually get a Bode plot. Uh, an interesting thing, it may not be easy to see, but uh, the banner on this guy is a little darker than the banner on this guy. So when I have uh, two displays, the probe is active for the one with the darker banner. And again, that would be the oscilloscope up here. If I go down and click this banner, you might notice that it became a little darker and the oscilloscope got a little lighter. So now the probe is involved with this display. Uh, these displays I can take and blow up. And I would tell you, oh, okay, we got a nice graph here, but we kind of don't like this graph because it turns out that uh, it's kind of uh, difficult for us to see what's going on. So what we might do is go over here to the settings for the scope. And if I go to the settings for the scope, what I'm gonna do is take and change the x-axis, which is frequency to a logarithmic scale. It turns out that uh, you notice right now that I have equal divisions uh, a frequency here in the middle is 50K, at the high end is 100K, that's a linear scale. When I have you know, a very, very wide frequency range, it turns out I like to use uh, what is called a logarithmic scale. And that allows me to show more decades of frequency. So I'm gonna hit okay and you'll see what happens. I hit okay here, ah, instantaneously display changes. And you notice now that on the bottom of the screen, I have one to 10 and then an equal 10 to 100, 100 to 1K, 1K to 10K, and 10K to 100K. You might recall those are the settings I put in the AC analysis back under simulation. Uh, it turns out that uh, now we have a little bit better display that we can see, and it shows the output is one. So in other words, everything that we put into that circuit made it to the output uh, down here at these low frequencies. And the spacing between one to 10 is the same as the spacing between one to 10K. It turns out that's what a logarithmic display is like. Uh, now, 
I'm not really done with this yet because I'm gonna go back to my settings for my scope. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Y axis, I'm gonna make decibels. I'm gonna click on that, then I'm gonna hit okay. And now here's what I really uh, you know, desire to have for a display for the frequency response of a um, device like this. My cat as always is bothering me as I'm making this film, so bear with me. Uh, now, the, the things that you really need to know with the, um, you know, Bode plots are that they show the frequency response of various circuits or systems. I would tell you that the circuit that this one is showing you is a low pass filter. And I would, you know, make the argument that what happens is low frequencies, and it looks like frequencies up to close to one kilohertz here, get through the filter where frequencies up in the higher range do not. Here goes the cat again. So we'll just toss it down on the floor. Um, now, the question is, uh, how do we uh, take and characterize filters? Well, low pass and high pass filters, we talk about their uh, minus three dB cutoff frequencies and their roll off rates, both their decade roll off rates and their octave roll off rates. So let me show you how you do this. So I go over here and see uh, the cursor over here in the top, C and D are on top of one another, I think. And uh, sure enough, the D was right above it. And you might notice over here, C to D is now minus two. Well, I'm gonna take and move C downward. Uh, and I might use my um, down arrow key to do that instead of dragging the cursor. And I get up here and I got, you know, 3.04. If I go with, a, with a, uh, key, the up arrow key, you got 2.96. It's gonna be difficult for me. And, and again, this is a function of how many points I put into that analysis whether I can get this right on 3.0. So I'll grab it with a cursor and see if I can do it. And it doesn't look like it. So it looks like I'm kind of stuck here. And the closest I get, C to D is minus three. So I'm gonna use that as my uh, point. So that's where the three D, this is where this curve has gone down by three decibels. If I wanna measure what that frequency is, I'll grab say the B cursor here and bring it over and where it crosses this line. Now, if you want, you can take and blow up by uh, left clicking, making a box around this. And I can take and now here's B and I'm gonna use my arrow key to take and get close as I can. And that looks about as close as I can get it. Uh, if I go back the opposite way, well, I don't know if it's right now, now you don't even see the, the thing. Nah, I'll go the back with the key again and see if I can, uh, it looks like a little bit closer where it crosses. Uh, of course, um, you know, over here is minus 3.04. So maybe I can take and move C. Ooh, it looks like, yeah, exactly three now. Okay, so up here, C to D I've got, well, since I've blown this up, I'm exactly at minus three. So indeed I'll take B and I'll go over a little bit. And that's just about right there, it seems. That uh, is where it crosses. And I get a frequency of 1.572K or kilohertz, 1.572 kilohertz. Uh, in the experiment, I ask you to actually calculate that. So you can take a look and see how close that is. All right, so that's that measurement. That's the minus 3 dB point. We always mean the, the minus 3 dB point from the highest output amplitude. And how do I get back from this blown up screen? I go up here and I take and click on this arrow, the negative, the counterclockwise arrow, it brings me back. So that's to get in the minus three. Now, what about the roll-off rates? Well, uh, the roll-off rate per decade, decade we talk about as a factor of 10 in frequency. So if I look over here, I'm not gonna find the, do the roll-off rate here because it's curved. I'm gonna go over here where the, where the uh, output is going down, it seems a straight line. So I'm gonna go and grab this one and bring that right here on 10 kilohertz. And it turns out that um, I've got to move myself up a little bit out of the way. And I'm gonna go where we have 100 kilohertz, which is right here. Oops, right, this last one right here. And now I'm gonna bring C and D down. So let's make D go all the way down to here and C We'll go over here. And again, we can blow this up to try to get more accurate. Uh, let's see how we are here. Uh, we're not quite on it. So if I go 
what does it see? I want to get where it crosses. So I go up a little bit right here. Okay, that's almost right on it. Again, we'll go with the counterclockwise arrow. And uh, down here, I'm not sure if I'm going to get much closer. Let's take a look. Ah, I probably will. Uh, B is. I'm not on, I should be right there. And D, which is right here, I want to go all the way down right to the end. So counterclockwise arrow, bring it back. So from C to D, what happens here is I have 19.87. That's 19.87 dB per decade. And again, a decade is defined as any uh, two frequencies that are uh, a factor of 10 apart. And that could be you know, 10 to 100, or if I'm going here, that's 9 to 90 would be over here. Uh, this is 8K to 80K over here, and so on. But I want to be in the flat portion of the line. Um, by the way, uh, if I was at 70K over here, a decade lower would be 7K over here. Now, the last one is what is it per octave? And an octave is a doubling in frequency. So actually, I'm going to move A back to 20 kilohertz, which is right here. And I'm going to take and blow this up so I can see if I can get right on there. There's A and 20 kilohertz is, no, I don't know where I'm looking here. I wanted to find where it crossed. So let's go back. Uh, A is here. And I want to go with D where it crosses. Ah, so D was never on the screen. So now let's blow it up. And here's D. So oh, just about right on. Just about there. I don't know if I can take and move it with my arrow keys. And it doesn't seem like I can. You gotta be real steady. So now what happens is I'll go back with my counterclockwise key and C to D up here, 5.993 dB per octave. An octave is any factor of two. So if I'm at four kilohertz, an octave would be eight kilohertz. Eight kilohertz, the next octave would be 16. If I'm at 15 kilohertz, an octave down is 7.5. If I'm at uh, 20 kilohertz, again, the octave down is 10. Uh, anytime I double the frequency, I've gone up by an octave. And you might recall uh, way back from elementary school when you did some do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, that's one octave uh, going from do to do again, turns out to be an octave. There's eight notes in there. Okay, so that's a short little video about how to do the measurements for experiment number three.